Oklahoma Senator James Langford grilled Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra last week about the decision to use the term birthing person instead of mother in the Biden's administration budget. Let's take a listen to this. I also noticed you changed a term in your budget work. Uh, you shifted from in places from using the term mother to birthing people. Are you triggered? Mother. Can you, Are you help triggered? Me get a good definition of birthing people. Well, I, I'll, I'll check on the language there, but I think if we're talking about those who give birth, I think we're talking about, uh, I, I don't know how else to explain it to you other than I, it. it <laughs> I, I was a little taken back when I just read it and saw it, that it's that the term mother was gone. It's not self-explanatory. It was replaced with birthing people. And I didn't know By if the this way, was folks, a direction that you- This right here, this discourse, has penetrated uh, normie circles. I saw someone on Facebook who's like an IRL friend uh, actually share one of these boomer conservative memes saying, the left is trying to get rid of mothers now and they're changing the term to birthing people. And it made me face palm. Um, and my palm went like physically into my face. That's how bad it was. This, you think that the dumbest things would like get filtered out, but it's the dumbest things that actually do uh, you know, penetrate normie discourse. I, I, it's just so weird. This is why Republicans do it, though, because it's effective. We were going if there were shifts, if Who there were regulatory changes this? that are happening related to that, or what the purpose of that is. Uh, I think it's probably, and again, I, I'd have to go back and take a look at the language that was used in the budget, but I think it, it simply reflects the work that's being done. But I, I definitely get that. I, I would, I would only say, the language is important. Always, we don't want to offend in our language. I get that. I think you do. Republicans but love that. But would you at least admit calling a mom a birthing person could be offensive to some moms uh, that they don't want to get like a happy birthing person card in May or I mean, can, really can you at least reaching. admit that that term itself could be offensive to some moms? Okay. My initial reaction to this is who cares? Do you really care about this? I don't care about the language, like we're telling policing, we're fo focused on like the most anodyne, just boring things. Who gives a fuck? Senator, I'll, I'll go back and take a look at the, the, the terminology that was used and, and I can get back to you. But again, if, we, if we're trying to be precise in, in the language that's used. Mom's a pretty good word. That's, that's worked for a while and I think that's pretty precise as well. Oh, I boy. I could watch this so many times. Oh, boy. Here to weigh in on okay, this is, is she... Fisk. That's the conservative, I'm guessing. Um, I don't know these new hosts, by the way. They're terrible. Democratic strategist and Inez Stepman, senior policy analyst at the Independent Women's Forum. Guys, how funny is that? Look, Roger, I want to talk to you a little bit about this. I, I work in you know, campaigns, and I have a big problem when Democrats, I say, are so extra with the politically correct language because it's not the way that real people talk. So I'm wondering what you think about this usage of the language in the budget. And I feel like Democrats just set themselves up for this kind of material that writes itself. Yeah, first off, good morning, um, Colin and Emily. And it's wonderful to be here with Inez. I mean, if, if someone was sitting in a laboratory somewhere and said, let's come up with the most red meat possible thing we can throw <laughs> into the cancel culture debate. Like this is honestly now from central culture casting. Started. Like you couldn't yeah. invent Holy shit. a How better thing for the, for We need the like a fucking bingo echo. card, folks, with cancel culture on it, with uh, pronouns, like all this shit. And every single uh, video with conservatives talking so long as it's like 10 minutes, you're going to hit every single, uh, every time you're going to get a bingo. It's the same shit. Do they ever get bored faking outrage over, over things like this? Like, is that, yeah, exactly. As Mr. Anderson says, they're trying to cancel mothers. Like that's, that's what it is. Okay. So that's why they brought in cancel culture. I'm glad that you clarified that. They could do cancel culture. What else could they do? Couldn't they do like, um, they could throw in erasing women. They could throw that one in every single week. They just substitute it with something different. Um, <laughs> conservatives, Jesus, Vuvuzela <laughs> uh, chamber, and people are going to absolutely lose their minds over this. I have a couple <laughs> issues with it. One, you know, if Becerra wants to go in that direction, then he should just go. This is the language we're using, and you can suck it. Which is to say, like, <laughs> now, now this is now this is hey. now this is going to be stretched out for weeks, and there's uh -huh. going to be these drip, drip, drip clarifications, and and it's just going to go on and on. When if you, I mean, and another, my last thing is this: we have a very frustrating pattern in this country of 
changing language to tell ourselves that we're making some kind of progress, setting aside whether or not you're down with whatever the goals are that this may or may not represent. We've gone from shell shock to battle fatigue to post-traumatic stress disorder, on and on. We have this tendency to put new words on things and then pat ourselves on the back that somehow we're making progress on whatever ostensibly the goals are behind it. And given well, Roger, you know, the enormity of everything that's going on, I just don't see how this is, is a hill that anyone needs so, to climb. So, Roger, and I'll bring in Inez here. This is the Biden administration. You supported him for president. Roger, I'm assuming you support him for president. You, we all agree this is nonsense and embarrassing. Why are they doing it? So give us some insight into this. And let's ask Inez also, if you want to jump on this bandwagon of how completely ridiculous this is, and let's watch it all the time, and let's just run this for the next two years and take back the House, feel free. <laughs> uh, well, so I think this particular issue, I think Roger's right, this is just something that's going to be played on, on uh, cable media. I don't know how important it is in terms of, of actually the, the budgetary language. I don't think it has any impact. So I can see why people would then dismiss this as a red media culture war issue. Uh, but the reality is, the underlying reality is that there are a number of pieces of legislation, as well as a number of executive actions, um, to change the definition of sex in the federal law. And unlike the switch from mom to birthing person, which I do think is more just fodder for, um, like I said, this, you know, for us to yell at each other about. Um, I think it's ridiculous, obviously, but the underlying changes are very substantive and important and will have real impact on people's lives. And, and those issues, for example, uh, with the Biden administration redefining um, the word sex in, in Title Seven, in Title Nine, like these are real substantive changes that are going to impact women's sports, um, women's facilities. Uh, yep, we are yep. losing the ability to define man and woman under the law. Um, and I think that is a very serious issue. And I think rightly is treated as a serious issue by not only conservatives, but a lot of independents. Well, I, I think your point is This is so stupid. This is the same argument that Turf C. Gabbard made. Um, and, and she kind of referenced it in, in banning um, transgender high school girls from school sports. Deeply, deeply transphobic. Um, and you know what? Just to trigger them, I'm going to say that they should absolutely keep using birthing people. First of all, it, it's not bad. Listen, this is what conservatives tend to forget. Language is constantly changing it is constantly changing we're always changing as we become more accepting of transgender people and i hope that that happens really fast by the way language is going to change right there's going to be recognition of people who many of us didn't know existed right non-binary people are going to want to uh you know become parents and give birth that's where birthing person came from. Language is changing to reflect the times. Back in the 90s when I was a kid, queer was a pejorative, but now queer is not a pejorative, right? Um, when I say queer, I'm just, I'm using it as a descriptive term. Whereas, you know, when I, um, if I said that in the 90s, it, it would seem as if I was like uh, putting myself down. Language is constantly in flux. There's a reason why there's new slangs out every single month, seemingly, right? Nobody was saying poggers 10 years ago. I mean, language is always going to change and language will change with political times. And you know what? That's a great thing. I think it's great that um, people aren't going around saying the n-word anymore um i bet that some really want to right but i think that's fantastic we've created a more uh safe environment so black people can exist without feeling threatened language will continue to change and the lgbtq plus community um you know this is a community that is incredibly diverse right very inclusive and there's a lot of terms that people um don't know about like folks they thought that cisgender, for example, was just the so it was such a bizarre term to, to folks. Um, but now it's generally accepted as a term that is is good, it's useful, it's descriptive of someone who is is uh you know, they identify with the uh sex and the gender that they were ascribed at, at birth. So language is always gonna change. And people who are conservative, they'll use oftentimes the language debate as like a proxy for fighting back against progressivism and uh, civil rights, right? Language is like part of it. If they don't want to like be explicitly transphobic, they might say, well, I hate pronouns. It's basically a dog whistle. Language is uh, the way that they kind of control society. And, you know, conservatives, these uh, trad cons the traditionalists they always fight back against language language is always changing how long did it take to get people to stop saying gay as like a pejorative uh, like meaning stupid hey that's gay and they were so upset about that but i mean eventually we all kind of just collectively as a society agreed that um yeah we probably shouldn't use gay as a pejorative that's that's pretty bad 
language is always changing. It's always changing. And you might not necessarily be able to keep up with it, but just try. Just just try. It's not it's not a big deal. Expanding the definition of, of parents to include birthing people, this isn't controversial to me. I, I don't I don't understand why they're, they're, it's controversial. And normal people, like as they said, like just regular people who don't know anyone who's trans or non-binary, maybe they, they don't know. Like maybe they're not down with the lingo. Um, but, you know, may, maybe that will change. Culture is constantly changing. Like these folks think that culture is just static. Like it's the way that it has been is the way it's always going to be going forward. Um, but that's not the way that, that this works, right? I want to get to the point that Mr. Anderson made here. Uh, conservative smooth brains have been taught that there's one way everything should be and change is bad. Precisely. Precisely it. So, you know, it, it's interesting that, you know, this conservative victim, com victim complex comes back where immediately their instinct is to think, oh, well, you're using birthing person. That literally is an attack on mothers. That means that you want to erase me as a mom who birthed a child. But it's like, okay, but like there are non-binary people who uh, give birth. Um, so if we're going to be more inclusive, um, you know, it's isn't that a good thing to make more people feel welcomed? You don't necessarily, like if you don't want to use that, then, you know, that, it's not like a slur to say mother. That's not what anyone is trying to do. It's just, you know, exactly. Uh, that's a really great point by, by Revit here. Change is neutral, but it's a fact. That's precisely it. You know, change, change is inevitable. You know, uh, like it or not, things change. And I got to adjust the dog cam. Okay, I'm blessing you all with the sleeping doggy. Okay, um, uh, so Tara said that nobody uh, pushed back here. Yeah, uh, it also erases mothers who can't birth children. Yeah, in inclusivity is a beautiful thing. You know, we're going to change language from time to time to be more inclusive, to include more people. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, and if you disagree with the use of the word birthing person, I would uh, I would encourage you to use it just specifically because you can see that it really triggers conservatives. Definitely use it. And then ask them, are you triggered? Are you triggered? Um, so Tara says that they don't push back at all. Um, is this, so this is the liberal, I'm guessing. Uh, this is the conservative. Is that right? So I thought that it was going to be Ryan Grimm and Emily Jashinsky. Uh, but apparently they're doing like a rotating panel. Um, either way, I, like, I don't care, uh, about the show and, um, not the best political commentary and like this is an obama era alum look how quickly they just like fold to the right oh what you think that i'm being an sjw oh my god you're you're totally right language is always going to change you know this month it's a birthing person in six months there's going to be something new that they're freaking out about 